to Daedalus PC. Today I'm stepping away from product reviews. I'm going to be settling an issue that has risen from one of the videos that I did a little while ago. I spread out thermal paste. Since then I have received some comments telling me that I'm doing it wrong and that the dot method is the only way to apply a thermal compound. So I thought I'd do my own test just to see how well it worked. And sure enough, the spreading method does work. And it works quite well too. Today I'm only going to be covering the spread method that I use and the dot method. That is uh, the preferred method of the people that want to complain about the spreading method. So first of all, I'm only going to be using Arctic Silver. Uh, Arctic Silver 5, it's a fairly thick thermal interface material. So I, I choose to spread that especially. Um, I have a ton of this stuff and it's dirt cheap and it's a fairly good quality thermal paste. Since the dot method is supposedly the be all end all method for applying thermal compound, I'll start off with that first. I add a little dot, I take the glass and I push on the glass firmly. I'm wiping off any fingerprints or dust that may be on the outside of the glass and you can see it's pretty much smooth underneath the glass. And now I'm going to add the same amount to the sheet of glass and I'm going to spread it out with a credit card. I usually spread from the center. In this case I'm using a credit card and I don't really have a lot of uh, fine control with the credit card, but it does apply smoothly with uh, long even strokes. So now I am wiping away the excess thermal paste from along the edges so that we can concentrate on the center or the portion that would actually be on the processor. I just wanted to make that clear that I'm only concentrating on the center so I'm wiping away the stuff from the edges so that you can see that the center makes complete contact with the processor surface under the glass. As I'm pushing down on it, it spreads out evenly. There are no bubbles underneath the glass. I'm wiping off the surface of the glass so that there's no aberrations on the outside of the glass. And you can see, I'm gonna move the light bulb a little closer here, you can see that there's no bubbles anywhere near the center of the thermal paste that I spread. The only real difference that I found is that there's more pressure needed to make contact with all of the thermal interface material using the spread method versus using the dot method. This is due to the thermal interface material being in a far thicker layer when you use the dot method, which means that the CPU cooler has to have a lot of tension on it in order to push the bead of thermal interface material out towards the edges of the processor. Furthermore, the dot technique um, gives the opportunity for a thicker layer of thermal interface material than uh, the spreading technique, which means that there's more resistance through that layer of interface material than there would be through a thinner layer. I'm not arguing today that my method has a superior thermal resistance than the uh, dot method. I'm just showing today that with the proper application, spreading out the thermal interface material will give you no air bubbles, and that's what I've proven here today. Now, even though this evidence is pretty clear, I'm sure that there are enough people out there who will complain about this video, so I probably won't be responding to comments for this video, but feel free to comment and subscribe. Like it if you do, don't like it if you don't. This is Daedalus PC. This is Daedalus PC.